last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything, Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son, Isaac, will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Earlier this year, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus was released on the Nintendo Switch, and I personally had one heck of a hard time getting my hands on the game. Fellow COE'er Steven said that he was having a blast with the game and he kept telling me you should buy it, you should buy it, you should buy it. So I looked at the price of the eShop and on Amazon and it was actually cheaper on Amazon with Prime. So I went ahead and ordered the game. But then I had to wait over a month for the game to arrive. Now the good news is that Amazon refunded me a ridiculous amount of money, so in the end I scored the first print version of the game for way less than you could buy it anywhere else. So I guess, in the end, it was a win-win situation. The Binding of Isaac is another roguelike game where you have to start over from scratch if you die. The levels are randomly generated, and as are the weapons, enemies, bosses, and so on. The appeal here is that the game is damn good. Like, really good. Isaac is a twin-stick shooter where the left stick moves Isaac around and the right stick fires in the direction you're pointing. There is something insane like 600 power-ups or something like that, and you need to use each one before you know exactly what they do. Every time you beat the final boss, the game restarts with more floors to explore, harder enemies, and more dangerous levels to traverse. There's even something like 90 bosses in the game. It's just insane the amount of content that's featured here. This After Birth Plus version of the game contains all the previously released DLC as well as the latest expansion. When you couple everything together, you're left with a procedurally generated game that rarely ever feels the same twice. Yes, luck plays into it quite a bit, but you always feel as though you died because you suck, not because of luck alone. And with these sorts of games, it's entirely possible to blast through the most challenging runs if you just so happen to get extremely lucky with the different types of life, weapons, power-ups, and stat bonuses. That said, you can also get terribly unlucky, and depending on who you are, very often. This game is punishingly difficult, and when you throw luck into the mix, it can go to the extreme very, very quickly. One time I was going through the game and doing quite well early on, only to discover that every power-up from a certain point onward did the exact opposite of what I wanted. In other words, these weren't really power-ups at all. They continuously reduced my stats, so much so that I simply couldn't progress. And if you're unlucky and this happens to you towards the beginning of the game, where you just keep getting bad power-up after bad power-up, it certainly can put a hamper on the fun, but the good news is, the chances are you'll get hooked very early on with just enough good items to keep you moving forward and coming back for more hours and hours and hours after you first plunge into the basement. The story touches on religion, which I need to mention just in case you're a highly religious person. Isaac's mother is being told by God to kill her son. So he does what any sane child would do, he runs away. Except his escape leads him directly through the basement, where he slowly crawls his way, floor after floor, to hell. 
Of everything that the Binding of Isaac does right, there is one element that I wish was incorporated into this version of the game at the very least, and that is a built-in wiki of some sorts. Yes, the game keeps track of all the different items you've discovered, but you're never told exactly what the items do, so you don't know what passive abilities are for each of these items. The only way to find out is to head online and scour the internet, and that just isn't what I wanted to do. And I completely understand that this is how the game was built, so that each individual item sort of piques your interest and curiosity, and you're kind of nervous to hit that activate button on some of them. However, once I acquired an item, I personally would like to know what it does for future reference. This glorious Switch version runs at a rock-solid 60 frames per second on both handheld and TV mode, which is awesome. The game not only runs fantastic, but it looks and sounds great too. There's also multiplayer action here with a co-op buddy or three that can quickly jump in for a few floors, although at the cost of one of your precious hearts. So while there's certainly a trade-off, doing so is actually quite rewarding. Overall, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus is a fantastic game that I highly recommend to Switch owners. You can pick up the second printing run from any of the big retailers, or you can download the game from the eShop for about $40. I should also mention that this game is available on just about every modern day platform. Oh! <laughs>